Welcome to the Atlas. Yeah. We have never driven the Atlas before. This is the True. 2021 Volkswagen Atlas, and actually it is a combined review with the Sport Atlas, the, the Sport, Sport yes. Back. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cross Sport, Sport Back. Sporty, more sporty, because the back glass is like this. And so the, the way I tell you yes. between normal and sport is this. It's just normal, sport, normal, sport. However, much to my surprise, the Cross Sport, believe it or not, the roof is two and a half inches lower. It is. And it's actually shorter and lower. What's than crazy this. is that when you sit in the cross sport, it's like you're looking at the world through a letterboxed film screen. It has this really okay, low, yeah. wide letterboxed feel. Okay. This has got two and a half more inches of roof, significantly roof. higher. Yeah, the, yeah. the number one thing I have to say about the Atlas is it is bigger than you think it is. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. When car manufacturers are late to the game for any category, usually you would think they have to be better than most to be able to compete and get mm, sales. Mm. The Atlas has only been around for a couple of years, two, three years yeah, at this point. Yeah. And almost every other competitor in this segment has existed prior to this. True, yeah. So it's almost like Volkswagen has sat back and looked at all the things that people want. Driving dynamics is not necessarily on the top of that list for Agreed. this category. Agreed. And they've never actually built an SUV this big before. <laughs> the furthest they went was the Touareg. This is a genuine seven-seater knowing that families would buy it, knowing that people who want a lot of space and want a Volkswagen need this thing. The thing that shocks me about that thinking though is the MQB platform. Volkswagen created a platform called the MQB platform. It has a German name. It is their modular platform that is under everything. And I'm not exaggerating. The Volkswagen Polo to this, the Atlas. The Polo is smaller than yeah. the Golf. To this, the Atlas all start with the underpinnings of the same platform that is fantastic yes. for cost savings. I'm just astonished we're in something as big as this is, and it is directly related to the Golf. Not like, oh, made by the people who brought you the Golf. No, the, no, the, under, yes. the underpinnings yes. are the same as the Golf. The smaller engine is the Golf engine. The exact same two liter that's in the mm -hmm. Golf is mm -hmm. the smaller engine in this, and that engine is almost as powerful as this V6. When we talk about platform, especially the MQB, that just means the relationship from the pedal box where your feet are to the front axle is the same on everything, which means the engine placement is the same. Mm -hmm. And having this platform means that there is a limited amount of space for the engines and powertrains of whatever they use this for. The running gear to the engines, mm -hmm. anything, hybrid, electric, gasoline, anything the relationship is pretty much the same. So it's no surprise that we feel about the same because yeah. where your feet are and the distance from you to the front axle generally is the same. The size of the car around you and the length behind you is what's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they can change obviously the width as well while they go. Sure. This is, sure. in this platform. In I'm this really far away from you by yeah, the way. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> now, today on Everyday we're Driver. Way over there. <laughs> we're social distancing. Huge. Here we are. Right. What's interesting about this is that this is, as you were talking earlier about Volkswagen looking at this market segment, which is kind of referred to as the mid-size SUVs, but I like to think about it this way. This is the seven-seaters mm -hmm. that are not built in that body-on-frame, full monster running gear right. world, which right. is the Suburbans and the big Range Rovers yes. and Tahos, the, all, all of that, that kind yeah, of stuff. That's the level above expedition. this. That's the Expedition. That's the level above this. That's not yeah. what this is. This is the level built below that where it can come in front-wheel drive or it is a front-wheel drive biased all-wheel drive system. We're in that category. And in that area, this is almost as big as the largest in the class. This is about the same as the largest in the class, which is the Traverse. The Traverse yeah, is right. enormous. Yeah, and the Traverse big, trades yeah. entirely on interior cabin space. And this thing is huge on interior cabin space. But it yeah. is, as a result, it is also not as good to drive as some of our favorites in the category, which are like the Telluride and even the sure, Highlander. Sure. Those have a little more style and they have a little better, they're better to drive. And if you just want better to drive, you want the Mazda CX-9. But it now is getting smaller. It's the smallest in class in space. Yeah, true. This is bigger than those in usable space. The third row is enormous. It's huge. It's one of the biggest third rows yes. we've ever Especially been in. Especially for this, this scale yeah. of car. Yeah. Yeah. This trades entirely on space. And with Volkswagens, I feel like there's a lot of sterile shapes and coldness to the car when yeah. I get in. The small cars to the big ones like this, it just seems distant. It doesn't feel as welcoming and exciting and it's just 
so symmetrical and perfectly crisp clean lines. I am all about modern design mm -hmm. and I like that kind of stuff in kitchens and architecture and houses and furniture and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to cars, it feels not that inviting in a yeah. strange way and I'm trying yeah. to put my finger on what it is and I think part of it is the seats. Hmm. The foam design on all the seats, the front seats are actually pretty good and supportive, yeah. but the foam design on the second and third rows is some of the flattest foam that I've ever felt. <laughs> it's it's a bench. Talk about bench seats. Yes. It is a park bench yes. bench seat. Absolutely it is. I think the reason is for folding seats and mm. just to get things tucked out of the way because big poofy plushy seats don't really like to fold flat. True. Now, these seats back here, everything just folds really flat, mm -hmm. giving you a huge amount of cargo space. Yeah. But when you're back there, you don't feel really connected. You don't feel like you're part of the car and it's welcoming. The front bolsters are a little bit better here, but Volkswagen can do front seats. Mm. The Golf R, yeah. the GTI, yeah. they're sports seats. Yeah. Not that this car needs a sports seat, but I want to feel more like the car is wanting me to be in it. From the things you touch, to the things you mm. look at, to the seats, it, it all feels too designed. It doesn't have character as a result. You yeah. know what it kind of feels like a little bit to me? It feels like a really nice, modern hospital interior. I, I don't mean I don't mean a dank. I don't, don't, I'm not talking this about is some a place weird, for healing. I, seriously, I'm not talking <laughs> about some weird you know horror film hospital thing. I'm yeah. talking about a really modern, like just made hospital interior where there's no okay. flash, none. Everything right. is very crisp and refined and efficient. It's yeah. not a place you want to. Yeah. It's not your living room, right? But right. it's still very well done. Yeah, yeah. But it has to be built in a way that is efficient, and we need lots of space, and it needs to clean easily. I feel like that kind of thinking has leaked its way into this car, hmm. and so it's there's nothing hmm. wrong with it. Not at all. But I don't get in this and go, "Wow, this is just a nice place to be." It's an efficient place to be. It's a good place to be. It is. It's not a you know we should hang out and go for a trip. It's too efficient. <laughs> And like you said, it's not that Volkswagen is not wanting to give you features. There's a lot of trim levels on both of these, yeah, yeah. the Sport and the regular version, the seven passenger. But it just seems like with everything they're adding from an efficiency and safety standpoint, from the interface to all the safety features, they obviously increase the higher you go in the trim level, but there's nothing more. There's nothing extra. There's not a lot of surprise and delight. And mm. I think that's what's missing. From a styling standpoint, I'd say this is very well executed in matching the exterior styling to the interior. Mm. It is all harmonious. All the lines, all the shapes relate all the way around the car. And to be able to do an off-road kind of look, and that is accentuate the wheel arches. Mm. So look at the symmetrical wheel arches. There's no size differentiation from the front to the back. There's no, you know, kind of goofy but just a little bit more aggressive kind of look to it. It's just mm. very tailored. Contrast it with the current Highlander with the big Thor's hammer exploded su Here we super go. shape on the side. Here we go. It's the opposite of that. Which, what's your preference? But it is right. absolutely the opposite of that. Right. For sure. So from an engine standpoint, this is offered with two engines. The first, as you said, is the two liter four. This is the V6. This one has 41 more horsepower and eight pound feet of torque more than the four cylinder. I totally agree with this. The top trim level comes with a tow hitch, and this one with the VR6 can tow 5,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. Which is uh, per perfectly acceptable in this class. Which is great. Yeah. The other one with the two liter engine, which is actually, I think, the one you want. Really? Okay. Only can tow 2,000 pounds. Yeah. Only well, rated for two. Because it's an engine that was built for the Golf. It has eight less torques. I agree eight with you. Eight less pound feet of I torque. I agree with you. I don't understand offering two engines that are so close in specs. Completely agree. I completely I don't get agree. It. If if you're going to shove that little triple eight, that's the actual engine code, that triple eight engine that's in almost all of the Volkswagen products, you're gonna shove that engine in here and make it work, which at that performance it's okay. Mm -hmm. Then you have to have a secondary engine that's way above that. It's got that's yes. gotta have a three on both those but numbers. It's limited because of the platform, because that engine, mm -hmm. both engines have to bolt into the same mounting points. Yep. You have to decide what your towing needs are. But I think the sweet spot for this is actually with the two liter. Really? Surprisingly enough. You get better gas mileage you and do. only late eight less pound feet of torque. Yeah. 
I'd be curious Only to drive that 41 one. 41 less horsepower, it, and you've got a turbo. That shouldn't be that close. It really shouldn't. The secondary yes. engine should be a, a serious bump up. When you think about the fact that a lot of the competitors are dealing with well over 300 horsepower in this category, and torque around 300 as well, this is down for an alt engine. If you're going to offer one engine, fine, yeah. done. Yeah. But for an alt engine, it should be more. I need to drive this. Yep. Volkswagen Atlas, now with more beeping. You know when you put this car in reverse, it will turn your music down to make oh, sure you yes, focus. Oh, right. yes, It does that. Also, if it, honestly, not only does this have lane keep assist, it has maybe the most aggressive lane keep assist I've ever encountered. It's not just looking, I don't feel like it's just looking off the sides of the car. I feel like it's looking about two lanes in either direction. Yes. And if you're yes. driving along and it sees an upcoming like broken line for an exit or something like that, it reads that as something you should be worried about. Well, the difference is it doesn't just vibrate the steering wheel. True, true. It's not a boom. It doesn't alert you. It, it tries to you. steer for you. Yes, it, it does. It tries to jerk yes, the wheel out of your hands, which I think is inherently more dangerous because you're going to try to correct. You're going to try to fight it. Mm -hmm. I looked at the steering ratio for this. Okay. We don't put the fun to drive category onto SUVs it's like this. It's not necessary. This. Yeah. But you're still driving them, and that still <laughs> could be True. a differentiator. True. Yeah, yeah. The steering ratio is fixed. It's 13.6 on the Atlas. I thought. It seems quick. like a low number. Yeah, that's pretty fast for something this size. The yeah. Cayman is variable from 14 down to somewhere in the 11 to 10 range. Yeah. The 86 chassis is a 13. That's a sports car. That's a sports car. This Small has the car. same ratio. Yep. That tells me those engineers were mm -hmm. thinking, this needs to be fun to drive too. It's not just slouchy. And I think sitting here, I do feel like I'm in an enlarged golf or <laughs> It's weird, isn't Jetta. it? It, it just it's the strangest like, thing. It's just like this weird Twilight Zone version of it a golf really experience, and yet you've got all these seats in the back. And I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing. I'm just I'm shocked at how much that lineage has carried, like supersized up to be this car. Yes, yes. But what that means is, it's really easy to drive. Yes, for sure. For Surprisingly sure. Surprisingly yeah. easy for a big SUV. Yeah. It's so easy to look around. Mm -hmm, it's so mm -hmm. easy to stay where you're at in the lane. You don't feel like you're driving a car as big as you are. True. And True. what I like about the size and the styling is that I think Volkswagen did a great job as far as packaging enormous amounts of space in the interior yep. versus yep. the size, the exterior size. Because there's many times we drive an SUV or a car that just seems like, where'd all the space go? Yeah, it, it looked huge from the outside. You get in where'd and you go, go? Why, why did they lose all that space? Right. Right. This is cavernous. They have done an amazing job of pushing things toward the corners. I sat in the third row. Paul sat yeah. in the second row. Yep. He got himself not like luxuriating because the second row will slide way back. I and started slide, here actually. I know. Yes. You, we, we get it comfortable here, mm -hmm. then you know, descending order, sit in the yes. second, then the third row. But you found a, a seating yeah. position that worked for you with space in front of your knees in the second row. Yeah. And I sat in the third row. And just so you know, at six foot three with a weird torso, I never <laughs> fit in the third row. I had space in front of my knees and my head only occasionally touched corners. Yep. You think you've got to go to a, an expedition extended length or a suburban mm -hmm. to get that kind of rear space. You can have it on the Atlas, which means they did their homework. They yeah, did sure, really well sure. studying everybody else mm -hmm. and then saying, okay, here's our competitor. I think Volkswagen is is still dealing with a Dieselgate lawyer's problem. Do you? Yeah, because years we, later, we've talked about Dieselgate. You, I'm sure you've heard about it. We joked after that because then they offered the best warranty in the industry to make sure people would come in with like seven yeah. years, 72,000 miles. It was great, or six yeah. years, 72,000 miles. This is still a really good warranty. But Volkswagen is still stepping very carefully. I think that's the struggle that I'm having between really liking it and just simply saying, it's fine, yeah. it'll do. Because of the lack of style and flair and just, I, I think I that's want been something... lawyered right out of it. I think yeah. they've lawyered the flair right out of this. It's just want that. down I the middle, for that. make it clean. What, what is the spice? What is the inspiration for mm -hmm. the Atlas mm -hmm. aside from Functional everything. We need a seven-seater. What? What is stamp? The, is there beauty? <laughs> is there some sort of uh, anything? Name a subject. Name yeah. a topic. Yeah. What is the inspiration short of doing everything so right that you can't find anything wrong? It competes against everything, and I bet in many cl cases, 
family shopping for one of these, this would win. It's I bet you it checks the boxes wonderfully. We need to talk briefly about the Crossport. It does not have the third row. True. It's designed for a different market. Mm -hmm. It does look a little sportier, but mm -hmm. nothing about the dynamics have changed at all. True. And I think true, true, you've yeah. invested from the roof line and then all the way back to, to produce different tooling yeah. just to sell more to a slightly different market. A com yeah, just a tweaked market. On the other hand, Porsche's doing it. Well, BMW's doing it. Honda's doing it. With Mercedes the pilot is. and the Passport. Mm -hmm. The Pilot yep. and Passport are the same thing as yep. this and the Cross Sport. And, the, and I will the say that coupe the... coupe versions of all the Mercedes totally. SUVs? Yes, yes. Those the sell too. Kind of same kind of, of thinking right. right here. You're right. The Cross Sport has more space than all of its competitors behind the second row. I'm talking cargo space now. Yes. More than the Grand yes. Cherokee. It's got more than the Passport. It is enormous back there. It's impressive. And that second row, because it doesn't have the third behind it, has got this ridiculous amount of seat travel forward and yeah, back. Yeah, right. So you can right. choose all cargo or you can choose all legs. I mean, they did a great job on that, too. But you're right. It's a slightly tweaked version of this market on the same chassis. But again, I mean, they're directly, it's almost like they looked at the Honda build sheet and went, we can do all of that. <laughs> so what's the solve, then? I have it for you. Uh-oh. And that is the R-Line. Volkswagen oh. offers both of these okay. with the R-Line trim package. And it's not just a little bit better. I think it's dramatically improved, and it's styling alone. Really? It is you just like it the much more? front and rear clip. Okay. And I think they have done a great job kind of making it more interesting. There's, there's right. more flair. There's, there's a little bit of hint of something there. It's the <laughs> okay. R-Line that All I right. think you want on any trim level, well, whatever they're available with. Yeah. Do that with the two liter engine if you're not doing any towing. Mm. And I think that's the sweet spot for the Atlas. I don't know if that R line solves the problem because this is already 50 grand like this. That R line's gonna it be It is. Well, that's why I'm saying get the lower engine yeah. with the R line and keep it almost the same price. Maybe, maybe that's possible. I just, I want a big engine in this. I do too. Somebody needs to make a performance version. Because any sure, time any sure. other manufacturer makes a performance version of their big family SUV, people buy it like crazy. Even if they don't are performance car people. Yep. That one just sells. So my yep. question is, what weird engine in the Volkswagen lineup can Volkswagen cram into this MQB platform just putting to, make induction more, on this. to make a more powerful version yes. of this? Where's the 350 uh, pound-feet of torque and the 375 horsepower version sell. of this that, would sell. that has a little bit more sporty tune? Yep. I realize that's not the point of a truck like this. I get that. But everybody but makes sells. a version and it sells like crazy. The reason is you just want it. Yeah. That's why yeah, cars it's, sell. It's crazy. It can't but it happens. just be limited to does everything perfectly fine. That's fair. There has to be I want it just because mm -hmm. factor. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing that is missing on the Atlas.